everybody! Welcome to part four of our Clone Wars rewrite. We're currently rewriting the character of Ahsoka Tano, and in this video we'll be focusing on Season 1, Episode 7, Duel of the Droids, where we'll be finishing up having Ahsoka learn to trust Anakin's instincts, as well as being more open to the lessons he tries to teach her. Thanks for joining us! Just a heads up, if you want to see the full version of this rewrite, you can find it over on our Patreon link in the description. Over there you'll be able to see a bit more of our writing process, including discussion on how we could maybe develop Ahsoka's attitude toward war from something more carefree and cocky to something more mature. We also touch on how the show sets Ahsoka up to learn lessons contrary to the Jedi beliefs. So again, if you're interested in seeing that, check out our Patreon. Thank you so much and enjoy! Okay, so this time around we wanted to incorporate the lesson of learning to trust Anakin more for Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. What did we say in uh, the argument against the Ahsoka script for this episode? So Ahsoka is willfully ignorant toward the fact that Goldie is a traitor. Aside from the evidence in the previous episode, Goldie wanders off by himself on the enemy ship, endangers everyone by taking his sweet time opening doors, and alerts Grievous to Ahsoka's whereabouts. Ahsoka win. Later she shrugs this off with the line, it seemed like a good idea at the time. She only acknowledges Goldie as a double agent once she witnesses Grievous and the droid conversing as allies, and when Anakin confronts her about it later, she blatantly tries to dump responsibility for ignoring the problem by, by claiming, I guess we were all fooled, when she was the only one who didn't complain about the obvious problems with Goldie, and she even reprimanded others for pointing out the issues. At the end of the episode, Anakin is scolded by Obi-Wan for putting his men, his Padawan, and the completion of his mission in jeopardy to rescue R2. As soon as the transmission ends, Ahsoka chimes in, piggybacking on Ahsoka's Obi-Wan scolding, I can't talk, reiterating that R2 is just a droid. And remember, this is after she reprimanded Anakin for hurting Goldie's feelings when he pointed out that Goldie almost got him killed. No, you're losing it. That's R2. That doesn't sound like R2. And again, she's she's completely telling him right off that, no, you're wrong, even though she is not in a position to say to that. Make that call. Well, again, and in the last episode, we talked about this, about how it'd be like telling a mom, oh, no, that doesn't sound like your kid. It's like, how do you know? What do you know? In Anakin's case, I've been with this droid for years and years and years, so I know how he sounds. And so this is the second time, again, that Ahsoka is just like, oh no, you're wrong. That doesn't sound like R2. Yeah, very, very annoying because, again, she's not taking his word for it. She's not trusting him. So how would we fix that? Probably just have to take out well again there was there was also another another hint there about goldie goldie was purposely trying to lose the transmission because we established in our last writing analysis video that we decided that anakin and ahsoka are united on the fact that they don't want goldie around they think he's a mm -hmm. dud so would we have ahsoka say something to Goldie like, dude, what are you doing? What's your problem? You suck! Or would we just have her say um, nothing? It would have to be something very quick in passing, right? Because you don't want to take tons of time. I think because she's she's already kind of had that moment of... Because in, in the last episode, we had her say, when he first hears R2-D2, that she either says, I didn't hear anything, or she says she did hear something, but she thought it was R3. So like, we did have that kind of like, oh, I don't think he here on the ship master right so would we have her now she's kind of gone through this but there's there's still no evidence that anakin was right the first time so maybe she is still kind of doubting so maybe but, instead of her saying oh that's not r2 she could say oh are you sure yeah i would i would think that would work better because she's saying oh i don't think that's r2 and it's like well you don't know him well enough. So of course you wouldn't recognize his voice. Yes. So it, yeah, 
more sense for her to be like, are you sure? And then he's like, I would remember that voice anywhere, right? So he still gets to say his line, you just change her line a little bit. Or re recognizing that, that Goldie is um, messing up again, I think it's enough. Like if we've already established that Anakin and Ahsoka are united on this idea of he's a dud, if you just have Anakin be like, you know, you're losing it then you don't really need to have Ahsoka say something as well to be like, oh, you're screwing up again. <laughs> like, that's not really necessary. Master, our orders were to find the Separatist listening post. Perhaps R2 is at the listening post. Did you consider that? Okay, why is she all like, our orders she are to do this? this. She's lot. ordering him around. She does this a lot. Whenever she breaks rules, she throws it back at Anakin, like, oh, well, you do it all the time. But whenever he's breaking the rules, she's like, oh, you shouldn't do that. We, we were told to do this. And it's so two-faced, so two-faced. We kind of have to pick. Do we want her to be the person who says, hey, um, we're not supposed to be doing that. We're supposed to be doing this. Or do we want her to be a person who's like, oh, you do it and I do it and whatever. I think I'd rather have her be more of a rule breaker than a rule follower, but yeah. don't have her constantly throwing it at Anakin. When she does it, she should take responsibility. And you could have it again, This is, we're trying to establish that this is where she kind of learns to trust Anakin. So then you could have it that she does say in this case, oh, well, master, we're supposed to be doing this. And then when, he points out, well, hey, or to be at the listening post, then she it's kind of like, oh, you have a point. I didn't think of that. Right. So she learns that he's kind of thinking outside the box and like he's got reasons for doing the things that uh, the way he does them. Right. So we could still have her kind of say something, maybe not quite in such a bossy tone, but we still have her have her say something along those lines. And then she learns through the experience that Anakin is to be trusted because he's a man with a plan. So instead of her saying, our orders are to do this, she could probably say something like, but I thought we were supposed to be doing this and oh. uh, take away that stupid look she gives him afterward. I would replace it with the look of kind of like, oh, I didn't think of that. Rather than, yeah, I do not know what that look on her face was trying to express. Yeah, yeah see no, this? Disgusting. Rid of that. She's shaking her head at him. Hands on hips. Like, Ugh. no, no, not okay. That disgusting attitude. I'll send two mainline cruises to help you destroy it. But R2. What? Are you? Are you? Oh. She, okay, again, again, no consistency. Not even 20 seconds of consistency. We see her, hands on hips. I can't believe you're doing this, going against orders. And then all she's like, but what about R2? I would probably change that to like, but what if R2's on there? Right, because she just heard Anakin say, maybe R2's at the listening post, right? So she's like, oh, well, maybe he's right. And so then Obi-Wan says, oh, we're gonna destroy it. And she says, but we think R2 might be there, right? Or Anakin thinks R2 might be there. Either which way it kind of works. Because she's she's taking that first step, kind of like, hey, I'm gonna side with, with this guy and uh, see what happens. He's my master, I'm gonna trust him. We're bringing the droid. We'll need Goldie to open secured hatches and access the station's computer for us. Oh, and Rex, you get to carry him. Uh, we've already established that in our fixed version that Ahsoka is on board with the whole R R3 is defective and, you know, we wouldn't use him except we have to. So then, yeah, Rex could come up and be like, we're bringing the droid. And she's like, I know, but we need him open access hatch and hatches and blah 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 right yeah I, I think i would just scrap the oh and you get to carry him because she's not in a playful mood because she's bringing a defective droid on this mission and that's already a bad start to the mission it's a bad time for her to be in a, a like a good mood i like that shot it's a cool shot yeah follow me boys no get rid of that she i'd say anakin goes first 
and she follows. Yeah, like immediately after Anakin. Or have her, while she's standing beside Anakin, waiting for him to go, you can show her being kind of antsy. She's she's looking at him. And there you go, psyching, her, psyching herself go? up to make go? Sure. And, you know, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Where are you going? I hope you find R2 in one piece. She, cause she asks him, where are you going? Again, with this tone of authority. It's not a, oh, where are you going? It's a, and where are you going? Right? Yeah. I would just change her tone. Just be like, where are you going? Right, like, I thought you were gonna be with us. And then he can be like, oh, well, I'm just gonna take a look around. And then she realizes what he's going to do. And she's like, I hope you find our two in one piece, right? Like, but say it with more sincerity because yeah, she was just, I hope you find our two in one piece. Like again, it's it's lacking in sensitivity. More of the because what if he doesn't find him in one piece? And you were just like joking around about it. Like, that's not very nice. Plus, so, she's got more of this happy-go-lucky attitude in a situation where it's totally unwarranted. Yes. So I would just have, you know, have her say the same lines, but just change the tone. It's such simple fixes. I pour three to four three. So now the audience knows that R3 is a traitor. So you don't want it to take too long afterwards for your characters to kind of finally put the pieces together. Well, I guess there are some circumstances where you reveal early to the audience who a traitor is, because then it builds more tension and suspense while you're waiting for the characters to find out. But I feel like this isn't that kind of situation because there's already been so much evidence that waiting until you're actually seeing the, the droid converse with Grievous, like that's just waiting too long. Like, you can have that be like, they're not 100% certain until they see that, but they should at least be over 50% of, of the way there, or at least up to 50% of the way there, maybe. Where they're already thinking along those lines. They're starting to doubt whether this droid is just defective or whether it's doing it on purpose. They, so they have to have already started to to come to that conclusion on their own and then that moment of betrayal just solidifies it what are you doing back here oh, come on yeah yeah fix her whole attitude and and tone yeah. have yeah. her being like what are you doing back here come on and then instead of having her like oh there goes the little droid expression on her face have like this like again this is where you kind of start to show the characters are starting to suspect so her face is like what is he doing back here he shouldn't have been back here i'm starting to wonder about this droid this could take a while to bypass go ahead goldie make me proud oh, oh. i literally want to scream she's talking like it's a chihuahua and they're at the mall. Completely out of place. And again, given how much evidence there has already been that something is wrong with this droid, this should not be her attitude. So it would make much more sense for her to be like, okay, get to work, you know what to do. Or, or like, you know, even say like, I'm watching you or do this right for once. Something along those lines. She is not pleased and she's starting to suspect something is up. Oh, this will be good. Get rid of that. Yep. Those like, are getting close, I, so. I would almost have her agree with him. Like, he's like, oh, this is going to be good. And she's like, yeah, let's hope. You think all three is going to open up that door anytime soon? He's working on it. Patience, Captain. Oh, oh. She can hear the droids coming too. She knows this is a very delicate position that they are in. You don't say to someone, he's working on it, have patience. No, there's no time. Get it done now. Yeah, maybe Rex says, you know, he's gonna get, is he gonna get these doors open anytime soon? And she just says, you know, come on, hurry up, R3. And yeah. I would put on her face that she she realizes the weight of the situation they're in. This is not a, oh, have patience moment. I can always hop hard, sir. Hurry up, Goldie. I would, I would have her take him up on that, where he's like, I could, I could always hotwire it. And she's like, yeah, yeah, do that. Goldie, get out of the way. Yeah. 
And then she immediately starts doing what she's doing now, where she goes forward because it's even if he does hotwire it, it's not going to be in time. It's too late. And I think at this point, again, she's just went up another level of suspicion and maybe even have her say like, how can you mess that up? Droid poppers now! <laughs> I love that they can't hit some. It's three feet in front of you! How oh, can you miss? But at least they're not that stupid. But then again, why don't they just start with those? You know, why not when she saw the big group of droids coming toward them, she says, Rex, droid poppers, toss them to me. And she runs over and boom, done. Why do they wait to use something so effective? Good question. So yeah, I would, that scene would just become very much shorter. I need to see what he says to her. You must be General Grievous. He's just another tinny boys. Let's scrap him like the rest. To be honest, I wouldn't change that. What I would do is that the camera doesn't even change angles. It stays on where Ahsoka started out from and the clones. So you see her run off camera and then she's immediately thrown back and she's like, oh, okay, maybe we should retreat instead. Yeah. And not have it like zoom up in on her face like, oh, this is so cool. Just have like a kind of a static angle to show, yeah, how dumb she's being like, it's just another chinny boys. And then exactly what you said, she runs off and you get thrown back. Yeah, there you go. You go straight to that point. She doesn't even get a single like squirrel in. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your playtime, Grumpy, but wouldn't you prefer a challenge? That wouldn't be you. Thank you, Grievous. So this whole scene wouldn't even happen. I would just have her run straight away. I'd have him start to get ready to attack uh, Rex, but not actually start bringing his thing down. And she, she like, I don't know, maybe throws something at him. Like, hey, wouldn't you prefer a challenge? And well, that wouldn't be you. But he does go for her anyway. But then she just, uh, I don't know, if she just runs away immediately, would he chase her? If we go back to the scene we decided on where it shows her running off and then immediately getting thrown back and then calling for a retreat, I think I would have it that Grievous does chase them. So I was I was going to ask you, should we have her try to contact Anakin and be like, I think we're gonna die, what do we do? Let's just see how this scene ends. Well, that kind of works, that she kind of dodges and ducks. So then, yeah, I would, I would maybe, because you have to have the clones left behind because then they finish their job. If you have her retreat immediately with all the clones, it kind of screws up the, the next part. So I would probably kind of have it the way it goes where, like you said, she runs off screen, she gets tossed back, then he attacks the clones, but then she taunts him, she engages him for, for like two hits, then she ducks and dodges and runs, right? So she doesn't have an actual fight with him, it's just enough to, to engage him and then escape so that he'll follow her and leave the clones alone. Um, we wouldn't necessarily even have to have her engage him. I would have her at least allow him to get close enough that it feels like an engagement, but she's just straight defense the whole way. There's not a single second of her showboating because she did like a stupid little spin and stuff like that when she's fighting him. So you'd have to very much show she is all in in just those two strikes that she engages with him and then she goes from pure defense like putting her all in on pure defense to putting her all in on duck and dodge and roll and escape so that's the way i would do it and then maybe we would include the part you suggested where because as she's running away here and r3 follows her then yeah show a clip of her maybe contacting anakin and being like you know grievous is chasing me what do i do <laughs> Watch out for a second check I'm in the station. See, I wouldn't have him say that because, again, this is the show giving her reputation against Grievous. He should still be like, you know, 
you are not a challenge. You are barely worthy to be called a Jedi. So at most I would have him say, oh, there's, you know, a Jedi Padawan, right? So he still does not see her as a threat to himself, but he, he warns the droids so that they, uh, they know to look out for a second person armed with a lightsaber. Ahsoka, it's me, Rex. There are only two of us left. Should we abort the mission? I would have him contact Anakin instead of Ahsoka. Have him say, Anakin, Ahsoka took off to distract Grievous, and we've already had it that Ahsoka contacts Anakin, so he's already kind of aware of, of that situation, and then he gets a, a transmission from Rex saying, there's only two of us left, what do we do? And then he says, carry on with it, get that done, I've got our two, I'll go help Ahsoka, whatever, or, you know, I've told Ahsoka to rendezvous with us, at, you know, in the in the landing bay and just do her best. And in regards to Ahsoka contacting Anakin, I'd probably have his response be something along the lines of like, whatever you do, don't engage Grievous, just just hide and rendezvous with us when you can. That, that makes sense, sort of. Like, especially if he sees R2 then I think it would make sense for him to be like, okay, I'm gonna get R2, then I'm gonna go help Ahsoka. Rather than he's that close to R2, but then he's like, oh, I'm going to stop rescuing R2, which is like pivotal to the mission because the information in R2 cannot fall into the Separatist hands. Goldie, over here. Don't call the droid to. Goldie, no. <laughs> I would have it that she doesn't call for Goldie, but Goldie spots her anyways. And then she just like shushes him and then he turns the light on. And then that's when she's now 90% sure that this droid is a traitor, if not 99% sure. I would have her like 100% sure that- Yeah, no, you're right. This point. Yeah, I always start low and then go like higher and higher. Oh yeah, no, you're right. So yeah, he shines the light on her and then, yeah, Grievous starts to hack her and she, I, I would, yeah, maybe just have her say, traitor. Like, she knows. She knows that the droid is a traitor. I'll meet you back at the landing bay. I would have him run. Oh, uh, yeah. I had to get a replacement. Yeah. Oh, sorry, R2. <laughs> it was Obi-Wan's idea. Because you, you can have this conversation while they're running. What have you to report? <laughs> that stubby little backstabber. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't need this scene because she already knows at this point. Well, I would still give her the line, but I wouldn't have it be a, oh my goodness kind of line. It would be that stubby little backstabber. Like, she knows. Don't choose your lightsaber as a flashlight right now because... Oh, okay, she wasn't. She's kind of using it like, I've got my weapon out and ready if he's around this corner. I've got my weapon out ready if he's around this corner. So I would... I'm torn about that because yes, she's in a dark room, a lightsaber draws attention, that's just stupid. So I think what I would have is she has the lightsaber out and ready, but not on. And that stupid moment where she's like, oh, I don't see him. I'm going to completely relax now, like he's gone. That's just dumb. She should be on her guard all the time. This is a formidable enemy and she just a Padawan. She comes around the corner, her lightsaber's not on, but she has it ready, she's like, in a, a, a stance that's like, okay, I'm ready if he's there, and then Grievous grabs him. I think that works. Like, having the, the explosion kind of distract Grievous, and she uses that to, to get away. To, yeah, to cut his hand off. And... You know, I, I do kind of like that. Again, that kind of works. Like, it's a moment of she has to use her ingenuity to get out of a situation because she can't face him at his level. Yeah. So she has to use her smarts to have an advantage or not a, even an advantage to just be able to get out of there with her life. So yeah, no, I, I, I do kind of like that. And Grievous is kind of known for his gloating. So it does kind of make sense for him not to just immediately slice her head off and go about his day. He has to have the villain monologue. He, he does. He's just perfect for that. He's just the character for the monologue. I love how the droid didn't shoot at her, it shot at the other droid. 
That moment there is definitely showboating. So should we tweak it or should we leave it? It's not terrible. Like, cause she is kind of like, she doesn't have the chance to immediately stab it because it's moving. And so she's just trying to hang on. And then I would have it that, yeah, she sees the other droid is about to aim at her, not at the droid she's on. And so she has to jump out of the way just as it's shooting at her and it hits where she was just standing. And then she cuts down the droid that, that shot at her. I think that would work. It was foolish of you to take on Grievous by your- Well, I was leading the mission and it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, yeah, no, get, get rid of that. Look. I don't, cause like if we have it that she contacted him and saying like, crap, Grievous is following me, what do I do? And he tells her, you know, just keep your head down and, and try and get out of there alive. You could maybe just turn it into a moment of banter that he's like, you know, you shouldn't have taunted Grievous or something like that. And she is like, well, I had to, or, you know, you could, if it was done properly, it could be a good moment of banter for her to be like, it seemed like a good idea at the time, right? Because the show has already, sh like, shown us that it was a bad idea, but it was done out of necessity, and that uh, Anakin is already aware of the situation and how it came to be, right? So then it becomes banter rather than him scolding her and her shrugging it off. So then, yeah, I, I would maybe have him be like, you shouldn't taunt Grievous, or even have him say the line as he says it, but with that little bit of, like, bantery tone. And then, and it's fun, instead of stupid. Did he tell you your stubby little gold droid pal works for him? He might have mentioned it. I guess we were all fooled. <laughs> the, the he might have mentioned it line doesn't even make sense, if you think about it. I would probably just, well, because um, Anakin is angry at her right now because she's been defending the droid the whole time. So if it went out, down the way we've kind of been fixing it to, then I would maybe just change his tone and, and slightly tweak his words to be like, I figured out that Goldie's not just defective, he's a traitor. And she just responds, yeah, me too. But this was the moment where we were gonna have her be like, hey, you were right the whole time, right? Does she realize oh. at this point that R2's back? I don't know if they ever have her acknowledge it. That's a good question. Because she doesn't see R2. And I don't think she got... Uh, yeah, because her transmitter was destroyed, so she never got the transmission saying that he found R2. So then, yeah, if, if he's like, oh, I, by the way, I found out that Goldie's not just defective, he's a traitor, and she could be like, yeah, me too. Did you find R2? So then she asks about R2, and then... He can, yeah, respond like, yeah, he's doing such and such right now, or just say yes, or whatever. But yeah, that would be a good moment for her to ask about R2, because she doesn't know. R2 did it! Of course she did it. It's almost like, why are you surprised at that? R2 is awesome! And Anakin rightfully is like, yeah, of course he did it. He's awesome! Yeah, especially because in the last episode, when Obi-Wan was like, oh, you know, you should have wiped R2, they had Ahsoka being the one to say, oh, but, you know, him having that information has been helpful, right? Like, so she should know. So actually, so she just learned that R2 has been saved, that he's okay, and then she sees that happen. Maybe instead of having her say, R2 did it, be like, oh, that must be R2, or something like that. She knows that R2 is helpful, and she knows that only he would be the one doing that kind of thing, like unlocking the uh, the hangar doors. Yeah. Back. Um, so I think, yeah, just having her, her say, oh, that must be R2 or something like that would be fine. But yeah, I don't know. Like, it's it's not exactly surprise in her tone, but, it, but it, there is something there that's not quite, oh, that was expected because I know what kind of droid R2 is. Like, there's just something off about her tone. And like, I think it's confirmed, like it's not just in our heads, the way Anakin responds kind of confirms that there's something in her tone that's like, oh wow, R2, good job. And Anakin's like, yeah, of course he did it. Cause he's great. Where's he going? He's going after R2. I feel like there should be a difference between like, he's going after R2 and 
he's going after R2. There's nothing necessarily wrong with the way she's saying it, but with the way we've now changed the story, it would make sense to change her tone there. And again, it's not because it's like the way her tone is is bad, it just wouldn't fit with how we've kind of established things so far. It should be more like matter of fact. You risk the mission, all your men, even your Padawan. That line from Obi-Wan has, has always bothered me. Because he puts emphasis on Ahsoka, and it's like, okay, Ahsoka should be just as important as Anakin's men and everyone else yeah. you listed there. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And it's it, like, it, how could you risk Ahsoka? I mean, like, I guess it was kind of bad that yeah. you missed your men too, but how could you risk Ahsoka? And it's like, yeah, really? like it, and it doesn't make sense also because they're constantly putting their Padawans in danger. So that is really kind of BS. So you're right, it, his his tone should not emphasize, and even your Padawan should just be like, you risked you know, your mission, you risked your men, you risked your Padawan, all for a droid. I'm glad we got our two back, Master. But Obi-Wan does have a point. <sighs> Ahsoka, I knew you would complete the mission. Yeah, and this is, we mentioned this in the argument against Ahsoka, that she's suddenly piggybacking off of Obi-Wan here and be like, oh, see, R2 is just a droid. And, and yes, coming from her after this entire arc, she's been, oh, poor Goldie. Oh, I love Goldie. Oh, give Goldie a chance. Oh, now you can bond with Goldie and don't hurt Goldie's feelings. And oh, my goodness. And then suddenly she's just, oh, well, R2 is just a droid. What's the big deal? Again, her character is completely inconsistent. What did Anakin say in response there? Ahsoka, I knew you would complete the mission. Wait, 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 wait. Right. so she criticizes him, and then he responds by praising her. Complimenting her, yeah. Yeah, I knew you would come through. No! What BS is that? Anakin would not respond with that line. Instead, this is the perfect place to have, you know, Obi-Wan finishes his transmission, and then Ahsoka sits down, and she's like, I'm glad we got our two back. And then... Maybe there's pause, and she's like, you were right, Master. I should have listened to you. I don't know how specific we should make her get. Like, maybe, like, you know, I, I should have trusted you back when you sensed that R2 was near. And, you know, I should have trusted your instincts in regards to getting R2 back. That's probably a good way to put it, because that's, that's kind of, yeah, what we've decided she should learn to trust Anakin's instincts. Okay, that was Duel of the Droids, where we had Ahsoka learn to trust Anakin's instincts, as well as being more open to the lessons he tries to teach her. And we also got to discuss about, you know, setups and how and, and when to kind of have characters kind of coming to grips with the fact that one of them is a betrayer things like that and okay so we missed this it's not very much like but she makes an appearance and we're trying to catch all her appearances so um then uh, we figured we'd just cover this really quickly it's season one episode four destroy malevolence <laughs> i will not be made a separatist bargaining ship continue your attack admiral order our ships to stop firing where do you think you're going somebody has to save her skin I thought you might say that. There he goes again, craving adventure and excitement. You get used to it. Yeah, no, I hate that line. It's more the writers just trying to throw Anakin under the bus. Exactly! And then, yeah, she she chimes in on, on belittling him. He goes like, oh yeah, you get used to it. But I wouldn't do something like that, but like, you know, I just tolerate it in him because it's whatever, it's just who he is. Completely backwards. As always, so obviously we'd want to fix that dialogue, if not omitted entirely. What if we just gave Ahsoka, like, a smile? No lines whatsoever, Ahsoka just smiles. Because she's kind of like silently admiring the person who Anakin is. So Plo Koon doesn't say anything and Anakin's- er, and Anakin. Ahsoka smiles? 
Yeah. Or she could just wish them luck. Yeah, that that's I like that better. Plo Koon just kinda like watches them go. And yeah, he's he's not gonna stop them. He's not gonna make some biting comment. But then yeah, Ahsoka is like, Good luck you two. But yeah, obviously she's not gonna be like Bad luck you two I don't know. That's my master. Yeah, see something like that is much better, honestly. Because Luminara is calling it bold. And Ahsoka's like, yeah. He's bold. Mm -hmm. That's the person he is. But I feel like Luminara's, she's not actually complimenting him. It's like, oh, there goes Anakin again. Ahsoka's line isn't too bad because yeah, she does say bold strategy, so it can be taken as a compliment. And then, yeah, so that's my master and I have got, I don't really have a problem with her tone or anything like that. It's, it's just the, the underlying, like, especially because of Plo Koon's earlier statement. And then Ahsoka agreed with that. And then there's a similar, a similar, a similar insinuation kind of comment here that she again agrees to. That, yes, that's my master. So I think if we if we cut the first one and yeah, have that she she supports him and she admires that he's doing this. And then here, like, I don't think it would entirely lose the insinuation, but it would be lessened. And then having her like master wouldn't carry the same kind of like undermining because like it's clear that she supports and admires him and so when she hears oh another bold strategy by anakin she agrees with that yes it is a bold strategy that's my master he's bold so i think given the earlier fix it's okay to leave this one if you enjoy don't forget to leave a like comment below subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content and if you're looking for more ways to show your support consider becoming a patron next up we'll be doing season one episode nine Cloak of Darkness, so be sure to join us for that.